Just a boy milking a goat. Mm -hmm. This is what it is. Except for maybe a giant Oh no, she's got like hay eyelash extensions. I love this stanchion because this part is so smooth. Just the perfect angle. Her oh. head isn't, oh gosh. Okay, well. Oh gosh. <sighs> that happened. It's a good thing we have extra milk. What happened? Yeah. Noob mistake. The rain came back. So this rain's really put a damper on things around here with our new stanchion area build and everything, but it hasn't been as bad as some of the other storms that we got. But I'm really excited about how well the stanchion's been working. It's amazing because at first I was a little concerned it was too small, but it turns out it's the perfect size. The girls can't even like scoot away from me when I'm trying to milk them. So that's been a really great thing. Today, we are three days away from Luna's due date. Her, we're just, she hasn't shown any signs of labor at all. I'm gonna go down and check on her right now and see if she's made any progress. But she's just acting um, probably the most comfortable she ha ever has been. So I wonder what that means. We'll have to find out later. I'm gonna take you along and see our birth kit and the improvements that I've made on it, as well as take a look around at things and see how we've progressed with our little project here, redoing the stanchion. Look at the buds growing on the apricot tree. Those clouds are moving so fast across the mountains. These guys got their morning hay. That good boys. Hi, cowboy. The weather doesn't stop Blake from having a little bit of fun in the trampoline. <laughs> the babies just had their bottles. And they discovered that they really like the grain. So that's good. Trinity still has milk on her nose. <laughs> Prim, how come you're always the loudest, huh, Prim? She's always the loudest girl. So Dahlia's modeling for us the girl's house. I need to throw down flakes, freshen it up here with some PDZ. Gives it a fresh start in here. Put the babies in this enclosure at night with the mom. Start combining them as a herd. Then we can have Luna in the birthing barn where I have the camera. So hopefully I get around to doing that today and we don't have any more rain. Let me see if I could show Luna's udder. Excuse me, B. Mm. Oh, here she is at the minerals. A little bigger, I think, actually. Not much. So that's good. I, she's not showing any signs of going to go into labor today, which I really don't want her to go into labor today or tomorrow because we're supposed to have to rain today and tomorrow. No. Tomorrow's supposed to be even worse. I hope they're wrong because I don't want to birth babies in the rain and the wind. The wind is pretty bad. It was really bad yesterday. Blew everything around. Still haven't gotten Brian to take down this fence, which is fine because he was sick and, you know, it looks like we have more wet weather anyway. 
So I'm gonna get these girls milked. Actually, Blake, you're gonna get the girls milked, huh? <laughs> Blake, you're gonna milk the girls, right? I wonder if she's even wider. Whenever I let the girls out, they always run over to this side to eat the hay as if they couldn't get hay on the other side. And then Prim wants to go and say hi to the boys in the morning and get a little bit of their hay. But by the time I start walking, they'll follow me. All these weeds, I'm going to have to take a weed whacker to. They are really bad. The goats don't want to eat them. Just turn into these horrible sticker bushes that get stuck in you. And actually, I did let it go too long. See those? We don't want those on the dogs. Well, mostly Daisy gets them stuck in her fur. Oh, here they come. Who's gonna be first up the stairs? They're like, oh wait, something's different. <laughs> come on, girls. Knock, knock, knock. We have someone here to get milk. Come on. Go on, Prim. Going up the ramp. You're gonna milk, huh? Prim likes the ramp. First time in a long time. Hey! Not on the seat, girl. I like this stanchion so much. Isn't it great? She yeah. fits up there absolutely perfectly and unbelievable. Good. All right, have a seat. Well, here we go. All right, do you remember? First, we cleaned that udders. <laughs> You're a I, pro. I haven't done this in like a long time. Yeah, that's why you gotta practice. You gotta keep your skills up. Now clean your own hands. Okay. Now you dry. Open it up nice and big. There you go. Okay. Now first squirts onto um, the board. Right now I don't remember. All right, everything looks good. <laughs> there you go. Milk away, sir. <laughs> Any more grain, Prim? I remember doing this one time. Uh -huh. Remember, Dad couldn't do it. Yeah. And then I had to do You're it. You're doing great. A lot of people can't even get any milk out at all. It's not like you how you have to go. It's like you have to go up, and then you have to push. Up, push. She has nice big teats to hold on to, though, right? Mm hmm. The milk also comes out really easy on her. I haven't milked B yet, so I'm kind of excited. Oh, you're curious about milking B? That's right, because you milked Amber and Luna. Uh, one time I had to be somewhere. Dad and Blake had were home alone. Kayla wasn't here. Yeah, I was a boy staying about half a and, oh, it was because Kayla and I went to see like the Barbie movie. Our movie went late. I asked dad to please milk the goats and he, he can't milk. He's like, I was like, well, Blake can show you. And then I just did all the work. Yeah, that's serious. <laughs> Is that, you, you, you want me to jump in there? No. You gotta get every last drop. Let me jump in there. I'm having a go. Finish you off here. Yeah, I'm not the best. I would say I can get some of it out so then she can come home. Prim's holding out on us here. Well, maybe because some of it got on the board. You know, you don't really take how hard it is. Like, I mean, the goats are cute, but every single morning, no breaks. She has to do this. She's a hard worker. Just like our girls, she's a hard worker. It's always good. 
Bye, Prim. She doesn't even use the wrap. Watch. Boom. Right in. She knows the drill. Okay. Yeah, she has a great udder. And her placement's really good, too. Yeah, I love her udder. Go under. Her attachments are pretty... Let's see her attachments, actually. Oh! <laughs> she's, she's not too sure about what's going on, so I don't think she's going to let me show that. Oh, do the first squirts. Prim doesn't give a lot. With the cold weather, they give less milk for sure. Yes. Just a boy milking a goat. Mm -hmm. This is all it is. Except for maybe a giant leaf. Oh no, she's got like. Hey, eyelash extensions. So I love this stanchion because this part is so smooth. And it's just so much more comfortable. I can see with this professional build and plans and how it's designed that their neck is at just the perfect angle. Her oh. head isn't, oh gosh. Okay, well. Oh gosh. <sighs> That happened. What happened? I was milking her. I was milking her. She just did that and I had to go. We're not gonna cry over spilt milk. Yeah. We still have store bought milk. Noob mistake. Things happen. How about you go give this milk to the chickens since it got stomped in. We won't let it go entirely to waste. Well, I'm grateful that it's not raining while we tried to do that at least. Last year at this time, we were snowed in. Come on. Okay. So if we get a stomped milk, then the chickens get to have it. And that's good extra protein and calcium for them. See, they're drinking it up. No biggie. Yep. Let the chickens enjoy. And I got cookies. What are you getting at? Come on, girls. Got cookies. Cookies. Uh oh, I feel sprinkles coming. Come on, Prim. Get your cookie. Now go. Dahlia. The savage Dahlia. Savage. And then the dude, she's so she's bigger in person. All right, guys, stay dry. Don't stay out here. Go in there. Starting to sprinkle. This tree is already starting to bloom. This is always the first to bloom. It's some kind of fruit tree and I always forget which kind. If you know, let me know. Blake, I got your breakfast. Isn't that happy? Oh, <laughs> okay, I see it now. You see it? <laughs> You're eating the nose? I'm just trying to do laundry, but Hemi has another idea. He thinks that he should get to ride inside the washing machine. <laughs> Silly kitty, Hemi. Hemi. <laughs> You're not laundry, Hemi. Yeah, yeah, maybe you should come out. <laughs> come on, Hemi. <sighs> this is a 
prettiest blooming tree. You can really see how the wind is going too. Hey guys, so I have my birthing kit here and I'm so excited to show you what I've included. I did a little update. I made it more organized. I made sure everything was sanitized and ready to go for Luna's birth. So let's see what we've got. First off, I printed up Danelle's position chart. It has positions and tips. I'm really loving it. It's very helpful to have a tool like this. Just so easy to see. First page and the second page on the back. And it's right at the top so I can grab it and hopefully have the frame of mind to read it clearly if I have any trouble, which, you know, I'm praying that I don't. So inside my folder, in the first section, I have my original kidding position and delivery chart, which is a lot more wordy, but also really helpful to have on hand to reference. There's a little bit more detail there, so if I do run into any trouble, I can still reference this if I'm not, you know, able to find it in Danelle's chart. In my next section, I have all of the wonderful veterinarians in our area, uh, you know, the veterinary contacts for our area printed up here. So not only do I have it in my phone, but Brian or Blake even could call a number from this list and hopefully out of the, there's not many that see goats in our area a lot of horse vets but we at least have five emergency vets that will come out to the farm and then we also have a few different animal hospitals one animal hospital and it is a couple hours away that takes goats so hopefully we don't need to go that drastic but you know there's other important numbers in this chart as well lastly in this i have what i need to have in my kit and also instructions about uh, treatment for the umbilical cord care is also in here. I have my bottle feeding guide which let me just mention I got this from a wonderful group that I'm a part of on Facebook called Go Emergency Team. They have this as a file so it's their kit. It's their bottle feeding guide and it's always worked wonderful for me but it isn't Nigerian goat specific. Nigerian dwarf goats aren't as large as other goats. So this guide is wonderful up until a certain point and then you really need to not follow it. So I, I've actually been thinking of coming out with my own. So got to have that folder, right? Because that's what I'm going to need to keep my mind clear in the moment. Now, in my actual kit, I have gloves. I have, if I need to go in, I have a wonderful tool that you have to have, which is OB lube or some kind of lubricant so that you don't have dry hands when you're, you know, making assessments. So I have that. <laughs> I have the ball sucky. When the babies come out, as soon as their head comes out, you've got to start clearing their airway. And this is the tool to do it. And it's the same tool that any doctor or nurse would use in the hospital on a person. Same thing. So I have that. And I have lots of puppy pads to put under the baby as they're coming out to collect up all of those juices. <laughs> I really want to shy away from using so many towels this year. They're really difficult to clean and they just get really nasty, but I do have a bunch of towels ready to go. So have those. I have a trash bag for those, which is often overlooked and always needed. I have a um, hand gel sanitizer because you're touching a lot of things and you want to kill any potential pathogens, right? Nutra Drench for goats is a really good supplemental, uh, has a lot of rapid rich nutrition and sometimes the babies are a little out of it you could say. They need a little extra something even before they get their colostrum in. So this even can be given to newborns. You just pump it into their mouths and it perks them right up. You can also give it to the goat moms to give them a little extra something that they might need. Now we're moving on. Hopefully I don't have to do this down at the birthing site because 
it's better to you know take the babies away get them cleaned up in the warmth of the house but if i'm stuck down there for whatever reason i want to have my umbilical care kit and my iodine to dip the umbilical site into so i have that and i have little scissors medical scissors a thermometer in case i might need it and uh, alcohol swabs to sanitize everything right in there and once mom has given birth to her kids she's going to want a little extra something in her water we always give her some molasses and these are some special electrolytes um, that i put in their water kind of like goat gatorade right and so this is something that i have already measured out for their two and a half gallon bucket ready to go so i can put both of those in her water and she'll be really set up for success with her colostrum coming in now lastly uh with the whole birthing process i do have my lamb puller it has been sanitized i highly recommend you do that if you ever you know need to make one of these kits you got to have a lamb puller ready but it's at the bottom because it's like a last resort, it's really not what I wanna to have to use. <laughs> so once babies are born, they have to have colostrum within the first 30 minutes. So I have my teat wash already prepared. I've got a colostrum collection jar already sanitized. And then I have a little bottle so I can give them their first drink of colostrum. And that, my friends, is what you need to have in your kit. So hopefully it all goes well and we have everything that we need for a successful birth with Luna. So I am gonna paint the stairs and I do wanna give a nice coat to the deck here. So that's one thing on the list. And I definitely have to get rid of this nasty bean bag. And I talked Brian into putting the barbecue downstairs. We'll have more room here. And then this was never meant to be outside. <laughs> I was thinking the base of it's good and sturdy. I might be able to take this part off and put a piece of either outdoor wood or painted wood or stone would be cool. So we'll have to see. We have to really do a lot of cleanup here. It's gonna be a big job. So these stair rails really getting weathered. So we're gonna clean them up. This is my cleaning solution. I'm amazed at how dirty these are. Then you just spray it off with water. So this is the all-in-one wood prep by Valspar that we're using to prep the deck before I stain it. And look at how dirty that one rail was. Filthy, it, I think it really works because our wood is basically that gray color. And just with a little bit of scrubbing, it looks night and day. We also need to treat the wood that's on the top here. So now I'm thinking I'll just do a little bit of the floor. I'm gonna do this back portion. I'm at least gonna clean it, let it dry, and then I'll stain it tomorrow. Then I can move everything over li little by little to get this job done.
All right, so I wanted to show you guys what one coat of this sealant that we put down looks like in this section that I had cleaned. I'm gonna put down another coat. I used this applicator. So I wanted to do this section back here first and give it some time to dry and touch up the edges a little better. So then we can move all this junk <laughs> over onto that area and I can work on the rest over time. And I'm really liking how this top part looks. I finished this off yesterday and I even managed to get some water on it and it just beat it up. So I did two coats here and we started to paint of the railing with some primer and I primed the stairs. We never could understand why the original owner who built this deck, we never did know what the purpose of that was. And I kind of like got used to the look of it over time, but now I think it would be better to just paint it white like the stairs. If you're at all thinking, why am I bothering to show you all this, this is a goat channel, a goat homesteading channel. <laughs> Just remember that this is part of homesteading as you have to, you know, maintain your equipment. And because we milk up here and, it, uh, you know, this is part of our home, we've got to maintain it. So it's not the glamorous stuff all the time around here. I've got to divide my time between maintaining which is sometimes includes this kind of work or you know i've also got a homeschool blake so you know i'm taking breaks i'm doing this kind of work and you know it is certainly something that i can do it's not too heavy and it's not out of my abilities i'm probably not the best at it but, you know, it's certainly not something we're going to hire out. Right now, I'm just kind of getting into the edges because I have a broom that I showed that does a better job of the entire application. But I need to get into those under parts because of how this was built. That part's more tedious. But it just has to be done. Otherwise, you know, this deck is gonna fall apart. It really gets beat up with our weather. And we want it to be nice and to last a long time because we don't plan on moving even though sometimes we think about it. We don't plan on it. So I'm gonna go around the edges and then I'll give it the second coat. All right, so that is with the second coat still not dry. Now this is what I've accomplished. I know this is not a professional job and maybe I did a lot of things wrong. But for right now, based on my results from the way this is looking, I mean, look at the difference. <laughs> the difference is definitely noticeable. We've lived here 
three years and we haven't done anything with the deck, we probably should just treat it every year because that's the best way to keep it nice. And I hope to do that. It was not hard. The hardest part was waiting in between painting or, you know, staining, cleaning. You're supposed to wait a couple days in between. Oh, one more thing about this. Um, we're going to let it dry for four hours and then I should be okay to move the furniture onto it and then start to clean and work on the other side because I'm super excited. The stanchion's due to come in today and I'm even thinking I might stain it with this stain. I do have a couple other stains I could use so I do want to see like should I have contrasting wood or should I keep this one? I don't know what's easiest. Look, I got stain on my hands. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, um, you know, take it little by little, but hopefully get this project done quick enough that we can enjoy a freshly done area because who doesn't enjoy, you know, an update, right? Project's moving along, guys.